Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna find out what the Amazon man brought me that will help us with our chainsaw milling and hopefully fix all the problems we had before. Let's find out what's inside. Uh, it has been a busy few weeks. Um, running around, I took kids on vacation, um, trying to get stuff done, um, but but in the downtime, my downtime, I've been researching all the mistakes I made with that um, chainsaw mill. So in these packages here, I hopefully have the solution to most of the problems. Um, obviously, there's not a chainsaw in either of these, but uh, it might be in the future. But for now, I think we can do with with uh, what we have there might just have to work on you know might just be a little bit slower of a of a go okay so in the previous video you saw me build the chainsaw mill and then um the next video you saw me try to to mill out some lumber it's a horrible mistake um basically what i did was i split the log down the middle and used the natural split as a guide to run the chainsaw on that was a problem because the natural split was not smooth and flat and level. It was, it wobbled and had high spots and low spots. And basically what happened was the mill rode on those high spots and low spots and wound up either in a high spot was binding the, the bar and the chain against it. And you could hear the chainsaw bogging down or in the low spots it would dip down. And we wound up with a slab essentially, but it wasn't flat, it wasn't really usable his big dips and, and what's the point you know where the end goal is trying to get smooth level dimensional lumber so after that whole debacle of me learning through those things i've been watching youtube videos and, and tutorials and things um, and there's a bunch of different ways to do it you can take a two by six or two by four like i kind of showed in the end there and level it out and and use a combination of like screws and wedges and nails and things to get that first that board kind of level on that on the log and then um, make your first cut and then from there you're you're good you can take all that stuff off and and just mill down normally um, but I didn't like that it, it seems too time-consuming cumbersome so I found a few things here that should help with that, make that process a little bit quicker and more. Um, uh, so what's inside of here will make the, the process a lot easier and a lot, a lot less prone to mistakes and, and accidents like that. So let's cut these open, see what's inside. And uh, maybe we'll, we'll talk about them a little bit more too. I don't know if we'll put it together. Maybe we'll see. I don't know if there's a whole lot of parts. I have not opened these yet, so, um, and again, to stick with the tradition of going, buying the cheapest thing I could on Amazon as far as a chainsaw mill, I bought the cheapest thing I could find on Amazon for this too, so I'm sure the quality will be horrible, um, but even with poor quality, I'm still hoping it's better than screwing a 2x4 to the, to the log, so we'll find out. Could be another horrible mistake, so watch to the next video when I use this to mill the boards and see if it worked before you buy yours, maybe. All right, so first off, let's look in here. Let's see what we got. So I noticed when I was cutting the logs originally, um, I was getting binding on the ch on the bar as I got deeper and deeper into the cut. And part of that was the kind of the unevenness of the log. But I think another part of it was just the weight of the slab kind of pushing down on that cut and doing it. So you saw me in the video where, where did I put those? Are they still out there? They must be. So you saw me in the video um, putting orange wedges inside. You know, I had one small orange wedge. I was basically putting that in between the cut to kind of lift that weight up to take it off the bar. But I only had the one, um, and I figured as I, I had to keep stopping and moving it, 
So what I did was just bought a bunch of these, just kind of cheap wedges. Um, they're, they're plastic so that if you do cut them, you know, with the chainsaw, you're not going to mess up your bar. But essentially they've got some kind of gripper teeth in them so that they won't come back out, uh, is the theory. And you can beat on these with your axe and stuff. But basically what I'm going to do is put them in a pouch next to me or put them on the table as I'm doing it. And as I'm cutting through, I'm just going to keep popping these in down the way. I'll probably use the small ones, to be honest, over the large ones, unless I'm cutting something kind of real thick or something, maybe I'll do these bigger ones. But it comes with basically three, three bigger ones and three small wedges. Um, and then it comes with this cool little mesh bag to hold them in. I didn't know that. So that's kind of cool. So we'll do that to, to kind of stop that, the weight of that binding down. Especially I do have plans to make, um, to, to cut two to three inch slabs at some point. I, hang on. So let's talk about this for a minute. So, all right, so pause for a second on this. Plans for what I'm gonna do with this wood. I don't know that I'm going to do this or not. It's still in my head of, of a plan, but I've mentioned in other videos that I'm really into traditional woodworking, meaning there's, there's not a lot of power tools involved. Everything's hand saws, hand planes, things like that. So part of that process is a good woodworking bench. This is not a good work, woodworking bench. It works. It's a flat surface that I could kind of beat on and it's got a vise and things, but I want to start building more um, furniture pieces and things. My daughter wants to build her an end table for her bedroom and stuff. And I'm not gonna get the precision that I want working on this bench. I, I probably could, but my skill level's not there. But it's another thing of just, I want it, right? Um, there are a lot of woodworkers and stuff out there that have really nice benches and that's, kind of a sense of pride. It, it kind of shows you as the woodworker, this is your workspace, you take pride in it. Um, so I want to build my own workbench. Um, there's a bunch of different styles of traditional workbenches out there, um, but they all ca carry a common theme of they have a big top, a big flat top surface, a large vise for holding material, and large big legs, super heavy, so it doesn't move around when you're, you're chopping mortises and, and you chisel work and saw work and things, the thing's not moving around. So part of all this milling stuff is I want the legs of this to be either five and a half or six inches by six inches, like basically a six by six, big log, you know, big legs essentially with, you know, thick, stringers across the between the legs and I want to laminate the top and everything. I'm thinking about building the base out of ash because a lumber is still fairly expensive. It's, it's definitely come down from from last year, but it's still up there. And um, I'm struggling to find a hardwood dealer around me. If somebody does know one in the area that I could get hardwood stuff at, I would love to, to have a connection. But like I've Googled things and I, I'm just not finding what I'm looking for. Um, there's a lot of slab companies out there that sell like live edge slabs for people that make those like, you know, river tables and epoxy table things. But just finding like cut dimensional, like four quarter, eight quarter hardwood lumber, I'm struggling to find a, someone that can do that. So I would love that if someone could help me out there. But anyway, back to the thing, ADD's kicking in. If I could make a six by six out of that chainsaw mill and cut four of those, let those dry for a while, right? Then I could build my own bench out of my own wood from the woods behind my house. Like that's cool to me. And it tells a story of the piece and you know, this workbench will last forever. I'll probably hand it down to my son or something one day maybe, or, or who knows, you know? So, you know, this, I want it to be good and good quality. And like, if I could make my own wood from it, my own lumber to build it, like how much cooler is that? I don't know that I'm going to do the top out of that. Um, 
we'll see. I'm thinking, I, I think I want to do the top out of hard maple, um, but basically laminated, or I might even just do it honestly out of like yellow pine or something. The top's going to take abuse, but basically it's, it's almost like a two by four turn on its side and laminated together. And it's just like basically picture, you know, 12 or 14 two by fours all glued together to make one big giant slab and then you flatten it and everything else. But we'll get into that when we get to that point. But that's kind of one of my plans. So sorry, side bar here for a minute, but that's kind of what I want to eventually get to or use this lumber to build other things. You know, I mentioned an end table or something. I don't know that I want to build it on an ash, but but maybe I could build other furniture pieces. I could build chairs or, or whatever I want, basically cabinets, boxes, whatever I want to try building out of ash. And I think that would be cool. It is very pretty wood when it's, when you put oil on it, it has really, you know, really nice warm color to it that I really enjoy. So we'll see. Okay. So inside this box, You know, this right here, my shoulder, my elbow, my back and all these shots is another reason why I want to get a workbench because I want to build, I want to get rid of this and put like storage cabinet slash toolbox thing um, here. And then in front of that, build my workbench so that I can then like turn and face the camera this way and the wall be to my back. I think much better view for you guys than seeing my shoulder and my elbow all the time as I'm doing stuff. I just, I also horrible at videoing things. I'm not a cinematographer, so I should probably find better angles and things to film these on, but you know, I don't know what I'm doing with this stuff. So, all right. So inside this box, kind of familiar to the chainsaw mill. We've got some kind of aluminum T-track material that already feels just better than the chainsaw mill. But we've got some of that. We've got more of that. got smaller t-tracks that we're gonna go across to connect those longer pieces looks like we've got four of those these appear to be all the same big old massive bag of carriage bolts washers and nuts and some L brackets And then these are all flat on one end and kind of spiked on the other. And then we've got these, which these essentially are going to be anchor points. So Want this side is connected to these bars and this side gets hammered down into the top of the log um, That already right there you can see is just Dull and if that's supposed to go in bark or an ash log that's gonna have to be sharpened So got those We've got some kind of flat bracket with four screws on it And another one of these spiky things. And that's it for in the box. Oh, no, I missed one. And another one of those spiky things. Is there any more? No, I don't see any. Okay, so what is this thing, right? This replaces the two by four. And this is all the instructions they give you, so cool. So you can tell what this is basically. It makes two rails with a bunch of crossbars and these things right here that kind of hammer down to hold it in, in place. 
these bars here, there's screws that go through it. Uh, kind of can't tell on here. Is there a good way to show it? No. But essentially these bars have some screws that go through that wind up, you can adjust and level this out so that it sits level on the log. Then from there, your chainsaw mill runs on top of these and it makes a nice smooth, level, flat surface to run your chainsaw mill across and cut your first cut. Okay, so that's it for unboxing that stuff. I'm probably gonna do another video because um, I don't want this one to be long. Um, I want to try to keep it a little bit short this week because I've got some other stuff I want to do. But essentially, um, we'll do another video where we'll put this thing together. I'll show the build process of it. It doesn't look like it's that difficult, although these are useless. So we'll figure that out. It's Ikea style, just we're going to show you pictures um, that aren't even really good pictures. but. We'll build it in the next video, and then the video after that, we'll, we'll go out, we'll put it on the log, and we'll try to mill that. Maybe see if we can save that log from last time. I would hope so. Um, there still seems to be quite a amount of good wood on there, so we'll, uh, we'll try to save at least one good board out of that, maybe. A board and a half, maybe. So let's see what we can do with that. But uh, I appreciate you watching this. If you're still here, um, please, if you haven't, go on down below, subscribe me a thumbs up, leave a comment or if you want to, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. I said thanks again. Why do I keep saying thanks? It sounds weird. Does that sound weird? And I, I don't, as soon as I start talking, I just, uh, blah, 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 blah. You're with my appetite Don't leave me high and dry